All right, so I, I can two. listen to that 50 times. I love that intro. Yeah. Part two. Here we go. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't think that they, they... They do need to script who needs to be scripted if it needs to happen. And uh, you're right. They don't script a lot of people. I'd heard John Cena's promo on that SmackDown, and I thought he did pretty <sighs> good, but I, I, I think somebody said, are you crazy? And I went... And I haven't gone back to listen to it. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, Maybe he I was just like yelling. It. He was I just yelling. It was just him yelling, man. It was. I didn't like it. I was like, God dang, Cena, get up, get out of here. Just go, please. Take Jesus, man. I, I I think he's definitely putting Rusev over at WrestleMania. I'm I'm becoming more and more convinced of it. In fact, I've been going back and watching Cena matches over the past few months, and which is a, a torture, all onto itself. By the way. <laughs> The man is not working the way he used to work. He's just not. I think he's hurt. I think we are going to see him Wait, take Cena? some significant. Yes. I think he's going to take some significant time off after WrestleMania. He's going to drop uh, to uh, – he's going he's gonna to job to Rusev and probably get destroyed after. And then he's going to go away for a little while. Maybe only three months, maybe six months. But I think he's got some healing. He doesn't look right to me. Even in that triple threat match, he did the least of the three. Fantastic triple threat match. But if you go back and you watch what Cena did, he didn't take a lot of – he set up Rollins throughout the entire match. Every, almost every big spot that Seth Rollins had, it was set up by John Cena. Wow. And I think it was for, uh, for a purpose. Because I don't know. I think Cena's hurt. I – I guess I wouldn't be surprised if he was or if he's just working safe because he knows whatever. Yeah, maybe that's the case too. I don't know. I don't know. But, I mean, neck problems don't go away overnight. They got stone cold. We know that uh, Cena's got the neck problems too. They'll get him over time. And the same thing's going to happen with Brian. But at least Brian's being smart from the second he came back and he's being so careful, so, so careful the way he works. I hope he opens it up more. Uh, but the bigger guys, I understand it. I understand why he's working this way with with Kane, and and the bigger guys that he's having to work with. I think he'll open up more with with Ziggler, someone he trusts a little bit more. Yeah. But that was my worry with uh, Brock Lesnar. It was never the fact that that I think uh, Brian could beat Lesnar from a physical standpoint, like oh, because he's so much smaller. That never came into my head. It was always I'm worried he's going to die. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> that was my worry because eh? Lesnar. He can't drop Brian on his head like he did to, uh, to Seth Rollins. It just it would not work. He'll die. <laughs> that would be bad. <laughs> uh, well, there yeah. you go. Uh, there, we get some update on the Tough Enough there. Uh, with, with their, they seem like they're working with industry guys, guys who already have semi-contracts uh, or workout contracts. or, or I, forget, I like that. That type of thing. So you get guys who are already made it past the point of we're serious. Yes, you know you're I not like you're that. not you're not getting Schlubba McGee. Um, I, you know I actually like the dynamic of the previous one. I think there's a mistake. The WWE has dropped dropped the ball. It was money reasons, but they really should have. There should be ten tough enoughs by now. That, yeah, that Stone Cold one was the best one of any of them because it was the most uh, engaging. I, it was I was emotionally invested in the way he reacted and treated those guys, yeah. and they and they beat them up. They were mean. But then they were, but th- then you saw anybody who doesn't know any, who had never been to wrestling school, because I tell guys this all the time because I went there, they will, they are trying to break you. They yes. don't take you seriously. The reason why they don't take you seriously isn't because they hate you. It's because thousands upon thousands of other guys come in there, thank you for the money, and then they, they, they yeah. give you their money and you realize they're not serious and they leave. Doing two weeks at wrestling school for me prepared me for basic training because it was almost the exact same type of mental thing. It was more mental. The physical stuff sucks, but they try to break you down to build you back up, just like I ended up getting in basic training when I went to when I joined the military. Two week, it was I, I left like a month after uh, I, I did the two weeks in wrestling school, and it was very similar. It prepared me quite well. Right, and it does. And you got to be mentally tough. It's not about physically. It's about mental. Um, if you're out of shape and you look like a schlub, they're going to think you don't take it seriously. So they're going to kick your ass. And then when it, and then after six months, if you're still there, and they realize that you do take it seriously, if you are somewhat good or getting better or learning and listening, you need to start then thinking about working on your body because that is the number two. That is the number one or two things. It's arguable. I mean, you should hit. You should be hitting the gym and getting in shape, and then also finding out. Listen. 
there's there's two different things. If you can't wrestle, you can't wrestle. You know, yeah. there, there's there's nothing you're going to be able to do. Even if you're built like a maniac, if you can't wrestle, you can't wrestle. But if you realize you have some wrestling talent and they start to tell you that ever, whether it's six months or to a year of wrestling school, and then if you look at yourself and realize you don't look like a wrestler, but you're now learning to be one and you're, and you're pretty good at it, you then you gotta go. Change. You gotta start working out like you're you're ready for it. Yep, I agree. And that's um, exactly what you go. No one's gonna take you seriously, you know. So you gotta start looking right. Um, but the mental challenge is gonna kick your ass, and they're doing it because they they love their sport, they respect their sport, and they if, if you're gonna hurt someone and you don't seem serious, they're gonna make sure that you know you're out of there pretty quickly. Sure. Um, so be ready for that and continue on and and just just. Uh, I don't know. That's it. They're they're gonna like you if you, if you stick yeah. around, and and that's Absolutely. what you saw in Tough Enough at the end, right? Trish, yeah. Stone Cold, um, uh, Bill Lamont, Bill Lamont. When uh, they they just all you realize they had a heart. They seem like you know these these animalistic crazy people, and they were beating these people up, and then <laughs> and then you get to see them connect at the end, and but then but they were still you know pushing the guys. And Too bad we got nobody out of that show. What we was that guy's nobody. name? Like Silent Death or something? I forget his name. <laughs> the guy who won. Yeah. It was something Levine, I thought was his name. No, but, but his I, his he had some ring name right from the did beginning. He, I didn't even know he got a ring name. It I was had no idea. <laughs> it was laughable, whatever it was. And Stone Cold, you could. I mean, he it was like, it was like Silent Death or Silent something, Silent Rage. Uh, I think it was. I think it was Silent oh, Rage. Oh yeah, yeah. I think you're right. I think you're right. Oh my! I almost died. That guy was goofy looking too, but he looked like he could. He he looked a lot like Test he did. in a lot of ways. He had the type of same build and just nothing. He got he got released quickly. Yeah, you know, it was it was embar- it was weird. It's just very strange. I I thought he got like uh, he had drugs or something else. He had a something was up with him, but he had. A yeah, kid. I think he did get he got in trouble early, and then he was brought back down to Florida uh, after he like got in some kind of trouble, and they gave him a little time to work it out, and he just he, he didn't work out. Uh, he he was likable in that in that series, and yeah, uh, I think he was Silent Rage. And his interaction with Stone Cold when he said his name was Silent Rage, and Stone Cold was like, "Oh, Silent Rage, huh? Like, <laughs> is that supposed to scare me?" <laughs> like, I don't know what he was doing. Well, hell, son. It's always funny to me when wrestlers laugh at other wrestlers' things. Yeah. <laughs> and and you realize that that these people existed during like the Doink era and stuff. Right. Yeah. And well, it's, Doink was. I thought Doink was a great heel. For Steve Austin. To laugh yeah, the, at somebody when he used to be part of the Hollywood Blondes, and yeah. he had a match with Brian Pillman to wear a chicken costume. It's pretty funny that he would laugh at someone else's gimmick. What, are you laughing at me, Stone Cold? Uh, <laughs> you laughing at me, Ringmaster? Right. Yeah, Ringmaster, are you laughing at me? Unbelievable. How about your faux Hokamania gimmick you did in ECW for about a minute? What about that? Vince oh, McMahon yeah. and other top WWE officials left Denver. Uh, le- all left for Denver. The site of tonight's Raw, early Sunday morning, due to the snowstorm that hit the Northeast last night, PW Insider reports WWE officials were adamant that after last week's troubles, they would avoid any potential storm issues, uh, if possible, this week. Just some news that just popped out there just now. So I yeah, here, here's a little update. I, I found an update, too. Uh, okay. The Authority has announced that Triple H will kick off tonight's Raw with the big announcement about the Royal Rumble controversy. That's what we have to get to, that Royal Rumble thing. Now, now... Curtis Axel has already tweeted that. Yes, he did. Yes, there was a controversy. I won, or yeah. or whatever. <laughs> he did. That's what he said. He goes, "I won. I want my WrestleMania title match." Yeah. I love it. I love it. I Good love job, that too. Curtis Axel. This could be what he needed. I, 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 now, unless WWE, no, you're right. If WWE ignores this whole thing with Curtis Axel and doesn't oh go God. anywhere with it, that is so sad for him. It is because this is a door for him to have a gimmick. Like all year, saying that he's really Seriously. the champion. And yes, it is, and it's it, he needs it because he's got the he's got the right name, he's got the right pedigree, he's got the right look, he's got the right skill set. He's a good worker. There's just something he's been missing. Maybe this is it. Now, when he, the, I will say that he was on NXT that match. He was on NXT where it was like he was back on NXT now, not in. T- yeah, he took on uh, Hideo but, Tommy. But his match wasn't that good. It wasn't that good. The first one, the second match he had, uh, it wasn't. Who was it with? It was. Uh, I want to say it was Tyson Kidd. Uh, they worked a good match. The first match he had was with Hideo Tommy, and he got. It did not look good. Right. But the second match looked a lot better. 
Um, Second match looked a lot better. By the way, NXT this week, Hideo Tommy, Finn Balor, holy balls. Strap in, kids. That's yeah. going to be good. That's going to be a blast. Oh, I love oh, – got, I got to go back to watching NXT. I've missed a little bit oh of it. Oh, my God. What's the matter with you? I know. It's so much – I don't know why I'm watching Raw and I'm not watching NXT. I'm telling you. I don't, I'm don't. i doing NXT off. reviews every week now because it's that good. I was. I used to do it live. I used to do the live NXT things – Um. And it was actually a comp- competition for a while with me and a couple other guys doing it, and then, uh, oh. and it just fluffled out for everybody. I think it was funny. I've been combining the uh, Lucha Underground and the NXT review into one, and doing a battle review, and that's been working pretty well. People seem to dig that. No, oh, that's cool. Yeah. What else you got? Uh, well, you want to get into the controversy? What we think this tight's going to be? Oh, I yeah. think that's a yeah. I think that's an important one. See to what talk I mean? About. I totally forgot already. See, this is why I you're got here. you, baby. Um. Yeah, so Triple H made this. I mean, the best part of SmackDown was everything Triple H said. He, he was like, he was like breaking great. kayfabe, the fourth wall. He yeah. was, uh, he was going from heel to to face to <laughs> to, to to mimicking the fans of uh, both sides. And he brought some DX in there. Holy Christ, man! We got great. every Triple H there ever was in that promo. And people want to say, "Oh, Triple H needs to go away." No, he doesn't. No, he doesn't because he's good. Yeah, he is good. He's good at what he does. Shut up about Triple H. He's making he is making you hate him, which is the point. Yes, I I will look back on this Triple H era, um, the Authority stuff, kind of like how with Bret Hart. Like I hated Bret Hart at the time, and I was mad at the Canadian fans. And then looking back, it's like, wow, they did such a good job. I think that's a really good comparison. That's a yeah. really, really good comparison. We're going to look back on this where we're like, man, I hated that time, and we were so pissed, and they were holding Brian back and all these things, and Triple H was a douche, and then you're like, oh, he was a genius. like this. But I'm seeing it now. But yeah. the, but there's a lot of people who are watching him, and, and they actually hate him right now, but they'll it's see they, it. They, 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 they they're younger. They, hold they'll see on it. to this friggin' he married into the power bullshit, and it just drives me insane. But, Give the guy a little bit of credit. It's not like he's one of the top six or seven uh, in-ring performers of all time or anything. You know, geez, man, let's give Triple H a little bit of credit. He's worked for everything he has. Did someone, he get a little assist <laughs> for impregnating the boss's daughter? Maybe, but shut up. You didn't do it. Hey, by Here. the way, uh, part one actually made it to the cut 14 minutes and 40 Woo! seconds. We're on, good. It's already up on YouTube. As oh, we're, we're good. As we do this show... That part one is up on YouTube of State of the WWE number 30. Oh, we plan, just, it's like we planned it that way. It's amazing. That is it's fucking amazing. funny. So I think his announcement. Now, what's tonight going to be? This is it. I just I just pray to God, if I believed in him, that <laughs> that this uh, that this will not be Curtis Axel. You know, that's that's what they're going with. And no, if I just they said, do it in a good way, if, they, if they're able to do it in a good way, it could be awesome. But they have to do it in the right way. Let's say they bring – they say uh, – you start it with teasing the crowd. You have Roman Reigns in there, and you're saying, nobody wants you, Roman Reigns, and that's a good thing because you didn't win the Royal Rumble anyway, and you bring down Curtis Axel. And then they, they do something where maybe they restart the, the Royal Rumble. I know that's a little bit of a stretch. No, what they could do but, is they could also, yeah, but they could put Curtis Axel in a, just a match with Roman Reigns. Yeah. And then, but we know Reigns is going to win that match, yeah. right? I mean, No, you're right. Uh, I, they got to do something else with it, like – a fan voting of how to settle this. I don't know. There's, But there has to be some way that we're not thinking of to make this cool. I'm hoping it's not that. They're just going to reference Curtis Axel, and then it's going to be something bigger like The Rock. I think that's probably the second most logical thing is Triple H is going to reference The Rock for getting involved in the Royal Rumble. But where is that going to go? Triple H and The Rock? I thought we were always set on Triple H and uh, Sting, so I have no idea. Is that why they teased Sting and Lesnar? I, I, I have no idea what they're doing. It's very it's, weird. It is very hard to uh, figure out at this time, and uh, which is a good thing because we don't know. We're going to find out in a few hours. Um, but it could be, even though I'm angry about what happened, my, my opinion at this point is it's already happened now. It's too late. Yeah. I don't want to see. I don't want to see Daniel Bryan inserted now because I feel I don't. I think that's poor. I think he, we saw it last year. We don't need to see the exact same thing again. It's weak. It makes him look weak. It's poor. It's pathetic. I feel like um, the WWE failed with. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, I know that's not how they feel. They feel like they just built. They just made a superstar, and they may be. They may be right because babyface or heel, they've elevated Reigns. Sure. So, sure. 
which is what they wanted to do, and that's what's happened, and I guess that's got to be a win. See, part of my reasoning with this whole thing with, with Reigns is maybe I'm right about Cena being hurt, and they're just hitting the panic button because they need a new Cena like now because maybe they know he's stepping away. And they did everything they could to give us a new Cena in Roman Reigns. I mean, the way they booked that match at Royal Rumble, it seems like they knew exactly what the reaction was going to be. It's why they booked it the way they did. Part of me thinks maybe they're that smart. I know I'm giving an awful lot of credit here. I know. You're right. But it it just seems like it, man. They booked it the way they did, getting Brian out of the Rumble, which I think they did to actually protect him so he wouldn't be like Ziggler and Ambrose getting knocked out and then tossed out like a corpse. They might have done that to protect him from that. Now, it's quite possible that they booked it this way because they knew exactly what was going to happen. They're hitting the panic button so hard because Cena's leaving and they need a new Cena. And the best candidate is Roman Reigns because he's not a Seth Rollins. He's not going to be an amazing worker, but he's got the right look. He's got the right type of heat, and he was already popular before the event to be the next Cena. Yeah. So that makes sense to me. Now, whether or not that's happening, I have no fucking idea. Now, we also have, um, which you won't watch live because we'll be on live after Raw. Oh, God. Is the Stone Cold interview with Triple H. Uh, now, if it gets real, I'm interested, which yeah. it, it kind of did with McMahon a little bit. At times, it did. At times. I think Triple H is more willing to go there where Vince cops out with a lot of things. There's a good possibility that Triple H is not going to know every question that Stone Cold's going to ask. I think Vince knew every question that Stone Cold, maybe except for one or two, but he knew every question that Stone Cold was going to ask. I don't know if that's going to be the case tonight because Triple H is – he doesn't care. He's going to tell if – he, if, if he doesn't have the handcuffs on, he's going to talk. That's the one thing that I can say that I like about Triple H more than anything else because he knows he, he's safe. <laughs> 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 he knows he's good. I, I so. will be ready to either blow it out of the water when it's over or to applaud it when it's over and I will find that out tonight after our raw review I will watch it and then I will make a video and I just I hope it's good but I will blow it away because Stone Cold's been talking a lot of trash about Roman Reigns specifically so you know he talks trash about Reigns people complain about that and then Reigns makes himself look like a douche if he's going heel that interview was brilliant Absolutely brilliant. And it makes you think that there's a possibility that all of this was working in conjunction with each other. Stone Cold did the kind of, uh, not a promo, but he said the things he did on his podcast for this. Maybe it's all connected. Who knows? Uh, but at the same time, almost everything Stone Cold said about Reigns was correct. It's not, it's not like he said anything that was just 